Hello and welcome back to part 14 of Let's Play Link's Awakening DX. I'm NHSD06. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we just returned the ghost of Infinite Douchebaggery back to his grave. And now that we've done so, we can progress on to dungeon number 5. Which we will see in a few moments. Um, I was going to give an alternate title to this production. Um, I was originally going to call it Mershack. For any of you who have seen the uh, um, sick animation cartoon, the Mershack. Um, basically, these uh, kids have a uh, difficult time getting to the prom because they have a uh, an overheated engine. So what happens is, to uh, to their luck and surprise, a Mershack comes along. A Mershack is half mermaid, half Shaquille O'Neal, and 100% pretty cool. So uh, if you ever get a chance to uh, check out that video on sick animation, it's pretty hilarious. I'll link it in the description. Do the right, and uh, you know you can give it a look, see, so you can see where I got where I would have uh, gotten the name from. It'll make more sense when we get closer to the dungeon. Anywho, uh. We have a lot of swimming to do, and while we're doing that, I just thought that I would uh, give a little happy birthday to uh, Papa Jeff, Jeff Lars, good friend of mine. Uh, he's turning 19 today, so, you know, that's a special birthday, because, you know, he can do absolutely nothing. That's different than what he could do before. But anyway, Jeff, if you're watching this, hope you have a good one, and uh, enjoy being a year older, I guess. All right, so still swimming, still swimming, still swimming. So while uh, we're still swimming, I'm going to give another quick shout out, a series, uh, to my favorite foreign friend, Perry748, great guy, watch his videos, he's hilarious, he is uh, an inspiration for me, so definitely Perry748, uh, got two new ones, uh, Galen Loir, I believe that's how you pronounce that, like the French word for black, noir, uh, it's Loir, and Awaken Samus, go check out their stuff, it's good, definitely, definitely very good, and just in case Odin's watching this, you can do that with a rock's feather in this game, and I just proved it, alright, so we're in the catfish's maw, hopefully the whole Murshack thing will make more sense if you watch it and understand what kind of dungeon this is, um, contrary to what Jeff Lars said, of it, of his uh despising this dungeon in his childhood. The only thing that I despise are these stupid things with the shields on their faces. Oh, uh, they, oof, they just they grind my gears. We'll say that they grind my gears. Um, the only way to kill them is to use bombs or to attack them from behind, because the shield obviously protects their face, and you can't attack them from the side unless you're lucky. I think I've kill gotten a couple kills from the side, but you know. It's pretty rare that that actually will happen, so don't bet on it. Just do your best to get behind them and, you know, stab in the butt. But whenever you try to do that, they always change direction right as you're getting close, so Ugh. quite bothersome. But the item in this dungeon will help you out immensely, and it's my favorite item in the entire game, so this dungeon is actually kind of fun for me. Um, yeah, this little lever puzzle is kind of annoying with the pulleys and the jumping on the stones, but... You'll get the hang of it. It took me three tries. So, there we go. Now, we are in a room with some Stalfos or some weird bone soldiers. I don't know what you want to call them. And uh, some grass of a purple hue. So, they made a little ding-dong sound for the uh, compass. So, there's definitely something in here. Like that, right there. Alright, that room's important. Um, it's The floor panels are shaped like a skull. And there are four squares in the corner. I will explain what that means when I get to the room that has one square in the corner instead of four. And you will be like, oh my gosh. I never would have guessed. And I'll be like, oh my gosh. Neither would I. See, there you go. You can kill it from the side with the spin spin blade attack. But you just have to be really, 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 really lucky. Alright, so let's get out of here. Head back the way we came. Now we got the ski. We can head north. Kill the two little skeleton knight things. And... You don't really, there's nothing in this room, so you don't have to really bother with killing everything. I was just in the mood. 
That's right. That's right. Give me back my heart. Watch out for the little blades in the corners. They will get you if you're not careful. And this room is a must-kill everything type of room, and it's a butt because... You know, there's those blocks in the way, and there's the blades in the corners, and you don't want to die. And I tried to be fancy here and use my bombs, but, you know, of course they both decided to walk the opposite direction as I was dropping the bomb and having it explode, because that's just my luck. But anyway, but I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer about it. I'm not. Um, anyway, got that one. Stabbed him right in the butt cheeks. Got him real good. That's right. And we're going to head this way. Sorry, I was, that was my Dutch accent. I'm uh, focusing too much on my Dutch accent. Anyway. <laughs> Not really. Um, it was very much of an American nature. But anyway. Uh, yeah, let's see what's under here. Absolutely nothing. All right, this That room that we just went into with all the blades is really neat to go to later. But right now, it doesn't really serve much of a purpose. Okay, we're going to go in here. Getting these bombs is very... I wouldn't say crucial, but if you don't have many then you're going to be in trouble. You need to have at least, let me think, three, six, eight, at least ten in this for this dungeon. For you to be successful, you need at least ten. So make sure you get them. Because if you don't, there's going to be trouble. That's right. So let's get out of here. Now that we just got the owl's beak, which is completely useless because I'm wiser than any owl. That's right. So... This is a uh, must kill room. Oh no, it's not, never mind. Oh, look at that, hey! If any of you guessed that I was gonna get a piece of power and you were right, cause I just did. <laughs> All right, so there's one square in the corner and this room will make a lot of sense. So equip your bombs and your sword. And look who it is, it's Skeletor, holy crap. With shield and sword and whatnot. So anyway, attack him from the side that doesn't have the shield and he will crumble. And when he does, go lay a bomb on him. That's what the owl will tell you if you get the owl's beak it says you know if you can't kill it with your sword use bombs or whatever so you know don't bother getting the owl's beak but if you do anyway so there you go three times and he'll be finished and his arm is kind of upside down and backwards all right you beat me i'm out of here all right so anywho uh he's done with and you'll see uh you'll see his face a few more times in here it's quite and the funny thing about it is that he is not the mini boss. I thought he was, but he is not. He's very interesting. The mini boss is something that you're going to say, oh, really? How creative of you, game designers? This mini boss isn't in every single Zelda game in the entire world, is it? <laughs> All right. So that's the, uh, that's the Nightmare's Lair up there. Watch out for the spinny, psychedelic plan of doom. We're going to head back the way we came. Ooh. Let's see. Yeah. This this chest will make sense in a second. I've got what was inside this box. Come and get it if you can. Master Stealthos, aka Skeletor. So what you're gonna need to do is push this brick up, and you we're gonna come back to that switch here in a moment. Um you know it's a simple square puzzle, you know. That's easy, common sense. Just push the little trap, and I got lucky with that jump in here. All right, there's two squares, so this is obviously the second time that you're gonna face him. I went to the room that had four, so therefore you're going to face him four times. Gulp, you found me a real pesky kid. You know that? Yes, that's right. He man, that's right. Hmm, I wonder where I keep getting that phrase from. That's weird. So anyway, um, he gets progressively easier the second and the third time that you will face him. He only requires two bomb attacks, not uh, two bomb attacks, not three. So you know, gets progressively easier. Watch out for the the blob thing, the electrical and evil. So we're gonna jump over this little area there. And like this dungeon is, it's very reliant on the item, which I guess I mean it makes sense. It makes you you know focus on getting the item but it's kind of a bother how there's so few things that you can do without the item that you get here but I don't mind because it's my favorite item in the entire game alright room three took me forever to find this one I played this as a kid I beat it at a football game I think um anyway so here we go we're gonna this is um, room three third battle 
so we only have to uh, kill him twice. And his sword does quite a bit of damage, so be careful. If I recall correctly, I was very, very close to dying. This is an epic battle between me and Skeletor here. Oh, this was very close. I was so afraid of dying because, you know, I can't go back and re-record, so if I died, then I died. Ah, I can't beat you. I'm out of here. All right, so he's gone. Finished. All right. I've been NHSCL6. Thanks for watching and subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.